So Erica, does Erica start or what? Yep. Okay. You're muted. Okay. Right out of the gate. Here we go. <laughs> um, greetings, everybody. Now I've lost my text, so bear with me a moment. Here we go. Um, welcome to the Amherst Design Review Board meeting of September 28th, 2022. My name is Erica Zikas, and I am chair of the Amherst Design Review Board. And I'm calling this meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. And I'd just like to start by thanking um, Catherine Porter for her uh, years of able and generous service um, as chair of the board. I'm stepping into her big shoes um, with this meeting. Yeah, I'm um, actually an ac accidental moderator. <laughs> um, <laughs> But never mind, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> so um, the meeting is being recorded and will be made available via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Minutes are being taken. Uh, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and, the extend and extended by chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022 and extended again by the state legislature on July 16th, 2022, this design review board meeting will be conducted via remote means using the Zoom platform. The Zoom meeting link is available on the meeting agenda posted on the town's website calendar listing for this meeting or go to the design review board webpage and click on the most recent agenda which lists the Zoom link at the top of the page. No in-person attendance of the public is permitted. However, every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the meeting in real time via technological means. In the event that we were unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship or despite best efforts, we will post an audio or video recording, transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting on the Town of Amherst website. Board members, I will take a roll call and when you hear your name, please unmute yourself, answer in the affirmative and return to mute. Uh, Catherine Porter. Here. Lindsay Schnarr. Here. Rebecca Lockwood, not present this evening, um, and Tom Long, also not present tonight. Um, and Eric Zikos, chair, that's me, I'm here. <laughs> um, board members, if a technical issue arises, uh, we may need to pause temporarily to fix the problem and continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes. Please use the raised hand function and ask a question or make a comment. I will see your request and call on you to speak. After speaking, remember to please remute yourself. The general public comment item is reserved for public comments regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. Please be aware the board will not respond to comments during the general comment period. Public comment could also be heard at other times during the meeting when deemed appropriate. Please indicate that you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you have joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate that you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your telephone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back on mute when finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discretion of the, of the chair. If a speaker does not comply with those guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be disconnected from the meeting. And, um, Maureen, should I list out the agenda items here? You could just list um, the first uh, application. Okay. Um, and then when we're moving on to the next one, then you can list the second one and so Excellent. forth. And so Excellent. On. All right. So we have four proposals to review tonight. The first one of which is DRB FY 2023-06, Quince Quench Juice Cafe at 19 North Pleasant Street. And um, I believe we have uh, um, Chan, uh, Chandra here. And um, uh, if, she, if uh, you could turn your microphone on and your camera on and, and then indicate who, if there's anyone else um, representing. Hi, yes, this is Chandra and my partner Janice with Quench. And is there anyone else um, representing you? 
I think we're supposed to have um, Chuck from Chuck Signs are supposed to be on. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're here. Okay. I'll make them a panelist. And is there anyone else? Um, I think there might, if he's on, Chris Gregorius, he's the, yeah. Okay. yeah. Make him a panelist. I'm trying to, well, let's see. I... Chuck, you're muted. And Chris, okay, now Chris is coming over. Okay, so um, just give everyone a minute here. Hello. Hi. So if, uh, everyone wants to um, state your name and your address for the record and um, if you could share your screen to show and explain your proposal to the board. Chuck? Hey, okay, my name is Chuck Martins. Uh, I am the person contracted to do the quench sign uh, for, uh, you know, the people at the quench there and uh, I'm just involved just to answer any questions as far as, uh, you know, any questions you have about the sign itself specifically. So um, Chandra or does anybody else, would could you present your proposal to the board? Do you could maybe screen share and um, show oh, us the design and talk us through it? Yeah. Do you have a uh, do you have a copy of the design with you, Chuck? The measurements, perhaps, or anything like that? Uh, I have, I have, um, I have it. the The thing is, I'm not at my shop. I'm home from COVID, so I'm on my laptop. I do have it in the Chrome Remote, but it's in another screen. So I'm not quite sure how to get that to you unless I go there. And, and then I'm I'm really not big on like very knowledgeable about Zoom, so I apologize. Okay. But I know the sign itself is 23 by 80, 88, 88.6. And would any of you happen to have a picture of it? 23 by 89. I know this was submitted. Yeah, it looks like Maureen. There, there it is, right there. Thanks, Maureen. And I apologize. Like I said, uh, my whole shop is shut down this week due to COVID. So I mean, <clears throat> it's just still going on. So the sign is basically a backlit with LEDs, uh, just a box sign, uh, low profile, probably about three inches wide with acrylic face and uh, translucent graphics. And is that the only sign being proposed, the one um, over the doorway? Correct. As far as the exterior, I'm not quite sure what's going on on the inside yet. And to our, our business owners, are you considering any other signage on the door, say for hours or it's all on the temporary signs now, but we know that those can't stay, so. Yeah, so we do have some um, decals that will go in the door um, in the windows. Um, it looks similar to actually the what coming there. Yeah, the coming soon sign. So there will be, um, I believe the decals were, Chris, do you want to comment on the um, yeah. art on the? Yeah, sure. It's just going to be some window lettering decals. It's not going to be anything like what you're seeing there now. It's not going to be nearly as big, right? We're only going to occupy maybe 15% of the window space, I believe, with lettering and exactly like you suggested, Erica, hours, website address, social media pages, et cetera. So if I may, the, 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 the role in, uh, of the design review board is to review uh, exterior changes. Uh, so um, that's visible from the exterior. Um, so the lettering <coughs> and all that um, should be, uh, if possible, if you have that um, to show the board um, at tonight's meeting that that would be very helpful for their review. We don't have that today, Maureen. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I wasn't contracted to do the vinyl graphics, so I don't have anything to, to show for that. 
But if you do need something, I'd be more than happy to help them out, uh, you know, later or tomorrow and send you. Yeah. Well, I'll suggest that we'll, we'll review what is planned and what's on the table for today, but this just advise that um, you could come back to the board when you have the exactly. other designs the ready to go. We could do the next meeting, perhaps. Okay. Hey, Chris, well, I mean, would it be acceptable to show what we do at other other quench stores? Because it's very similar to that. No? And Chris, and can you comment on that? Is that sufficient? Erica Marine, I don't know. Yeah, I think it, it would be. You'd rather it see it. Site, it should be site specific. I mean, it's something Absolutely. that's okay. helpful to reference, but it's, that's not specific to this particular storefront. Yeah. No worries. We'll just make the next meeting. That's all. Great. Okay. Great. No big deal. So, is there anything else that you'd like to add about the the box sign above the door? Mm -hmm. No, no. Okay, great. So then I will open the floor to the DRB members, um, Lindsay and Catherine, if you have anything. Lindsay, would you like to jump in? Yeah, um, first of all, I'm excited to see this business coming to Amherst. So um, thank you. Welcome and thank you. Congrats. Um, so I am curious about the black. Um, panel I, i'm not sure if there's is the proposal to have essentially three panels so you'd have the black over the windows at the street front um and then the sign that's the backlit sign kind of at that opening and um is that the idea that you'd have essentially three panels well the black is already there uh, we'll probably touch up the black paint that's already existing um and then the Yeah, that's all I was aware of was that the fascia was going to be redone. Excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was just going to build the sign and put it up right there where it sits in the center. So would the sign sit essentially proud of the back panel that's existing and continuous along the face of the storefront? Yes, it's basically going right where it sits. Okay, visually. it's not being set inside of that fascia. No, it's going to project three inches. So um, I guess my thought is, I, you know, I see the black being consistent with the with the base of the storefront. There's the green with the black trim and the black of the you know, mullions around the, the windows um, and the black frame around that portion of the signage um, at the top. But given your sign, I feel like it might it might be worth just looking at what would happen if you painted that white, um, the panel inside the frame so that you had a continuous band of white that covered the whole width of that storefront, the white to match the background of the quench sign. And I recognize that it's going to be backlit so it'll have a different appearance, but I just think it might brighten it and give it a, a stronger presence um that continuous across that entire length not the frame around the signage panel but the panel that's behind the the sign so that you basically get that entire length above the windows does that make sense yes mm -hmm. we'd also have to get landlord approval Lindsay, for that uh because i think they want the continuity to look the same as well so yeah we'd have to speak to lincoln real estate but yeah sure what do other design review board members think of that idea? Catherine, any thoughts yeah, to share? Yeah, well, uh, I see your point. Um, and I think it could work to have the whole the whole panel white. Uh, yeah, I I would I would go with that if uh, if we decided that might be the best way to do it, but obviously uh, they have a challenge with the uh, with the, the landlord. Um, my question is uh, how you have quench and then juice cafe. If the lettering on the on the sign will the the black print for the juice cafe will be a little bolder because um, it doesn't stand out very much. In fact, I had to get up, put my nose out there to see what exactly it said. <laughs> 
<clears throat> so I don't know from the street um, if it will be uh, if it'll be noticeable uh, or if that's the nature of the signs that you have on other stores. But I don't know whether that uh, call. I don't know if anybody else felt that seemed to be a little weak in the uh, strength of the lettering, but um, I would suggest a little stronger lettering of juice. Can I res would I be okay to respond to that possibly? So that was a that was their corporate logo that was supplied. Uh, but if they are open to it, I'd be happy to maybe beef up the juice bar a tiny bit with a tiny, like maybe a little bit of a stroke just to enhance it a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but that would be up to you know Chris and right. the, yeah. the ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, don't, I usually don't try to interfere with corporate logos. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, I, Ms. Porter, this is Chris Gregoris. I, I agree with you. I, I think you can definitely be bolded. Um, and perhaps even fonted uh, to to match perhaps even Chuck a little bit more of the quench font. Uh, but yes, I agree with you, ma'am. It should be uh, uh, bolder. It's or even the font, you know, the orange font in the windows there that's a little bold. Seems like it stands out a little more, the orange than the, the gray. Yes. Mm -hmm. we so maybe just changing the color a bit might work as well. Yeah, I mean, I think we recognize that it, is it can it can be tricky to suggest changing a corporate logo if you've decided elsewhere. Um, and so respect that you would take our recommendations and understand that if they don't uh, meet with approval either at the corporate level or at the landlord level, um, that we would be um, happy with the sign as suggested today. But I think that the if I'm hearing my um, fellow board members, the, the recommendations are to request faint, painting the store fascia white to match the background of the sign to create a continuous band of white. Um, and then an, a second recommendation is to um, bold Juice Cafe uh, on that sign so that it's more readable from a distance. And I'm open to anything they need. I'm, I'm willing to work with them on co any color changes, et cetera. So Great. I'm, I'm here for whoever needs me. Okay. I'll add that I don't think that either either point of uh, recommendation are deal breakers or, or requirements on, from my perspective. Right. I think it looks great. Um, and it's more just a suggestion of um, consideration. Yeah. Is there any... Anything to add, Catherine or Lindsay? Could I ask one of you to move approval of the sign with recommendations? I move approval of the sign with uh, recommendations. A second. Wonderful. So all in favor? Please. Aye. 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 Okay. Wonderful. Thanks, Quench. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank we'll you see all. you again for the door signs or any vinyl signage. Yes, okay. we're going to get on that next meeting. I'll, I'll arrange it with uh, Chuck. We'll come up with some proofs and do a new design at review application and submit that for the next meeting. Yeah, and great. Yeah, so you could just email um, those sign plans and um, we can keep it under this application. So just email those when you're ready, email them to me and then um, we can set up a meeting. Okay, thank Perfect. you. And, and also, Chris, just so you know, let me know if you do want to move, make any slight changes as suggested, and I'd be happy to work with you on that. Okay. Thank you so much. No worries. All right, all. Bye bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank I you. I may need to stay. I'm, I'm. I mean, not maybe not for this one, but I think I'm involved with uh, uh, Sam from the other. Oh, he's uh, next. So. Perfect Great. timing. Okay. Might as well. <laughs> All right. So the next um, agenda item is DRB FY 2023-07. Hearing from Sam Dong of Lao Hutong Restaurant. Okay. And let me uh, make Sam, one second. Sam, I'll make Sam a, a panelist. Just give me one second.
Hi, Sam. Welcome. Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, Sam. How are you? you? Thank you, Chuck. This is my first time using a Zoom meeting. So if <laughs> I do something not really good, just let me know, okay? You're doing great. Um, okay. Thank welcome. You. And Maureen is screen sharing. Can you see the this what the, the picture she's sharing of your restaurant? Yes, I do. Okay, great. You want to walk us through your uh, proposed changes? Mm. Would you like me to speak since I basically I'm the one that knows exactly what's being done? Well, I think that, that okay? this is, yes, 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 sure. So, okay, well, thank you respectfully. Um, so basically the, the, what we're doing here is basically we're reusing the same exact framework that was there. We're gonna restretch it with a new material and then just apply their logo. It's still gonna have the, the scallops along the, the, the front bottom, as you can see, uh, the scalloped little ridge uh, balance. And uh, it'll just have, uh, you know, vinyl graphics uh, as decoration. Uh, how about the, uh, oh, can I ask a question, Erica? Yeah, I think I was just gonna ask Sam if he had anything to add and then I'll I'll circle back. Um, just, can I say something? Please, yes. Okay, so because I was already talking with my partner already, so we are worried. So we just follow everything like this picture. We're not going to change anything and we're not going to add anything. Just like the picture, yes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, now I'll ask the design review board members to, to comment. Catherine, you want to start us off? Yeah, I, I want to say I like the color. And uh, what we have found uh, over the years uh, with design review board decisions is it's really hard to, to be sure that we're getting le the legitimate color and particularly in an awning because next door to this or, or one or two doors up was a, a restaurant that showed us one color and when the awning went up, it was a totally different, we were different color uh, than what we had anticipated it would be. So I guess to the point is how sure can we be that this would be the color of the awning? Uh, it's, I think it's beautiful. Uh, and with the trim around the building, the doors, it's gonna be very, I think, stunning. Um, just that uh, how, how much uh, variation could we possibly expect with this uh, color? Now that's my impression, others may have different. So I'll put that out there and then, you know, we could talk about it, I guess. Can I answer that real quick? Yeah. yeah. So basically it's a burgundy, the color. Uh -huh. And I'd be happy to take a picture of the actual color in like, shoot you an email of the color swatch. I can't recall because it's been so long. We've been in, like we basically started this contract a few months ago and it's been mm -hmm. kind of going through the, the system. And so I can't really recall if I gave Sam a, a color swatch or not. Did I give you a swatch, Sam, when you were at my um, office of, of the color? Um, yes, we are all good, good with this color. This color is kind of like, you know, Kind of in our Chinese, just China, the red color is very good. The main is very good for everything. So we like this color. Just so would you? Would it? I think what they want to know is if they can see possibly a swatch. Is that what you'd like to see to make sure there's no deviation? Mm. Wait, I'm, oh, I'm asking I'm the, the, the ladies now. Yeah, yeah. I. I'm. I'm not, I'm not convinced that we need to see a, a color swatch. Um, okay. If you describe it. I just it, want to make sure. I think that maybe, if, Catherine, forgive me if, I, if I'm speaking out of turn here, but you know, burgundy versus bright red. Like, can we trust yeah. that we have a kind of collective? Yes, understanding it'll be burgundy. It, and burgundy then, will mean. then would the trim on the building also be matched? Are you going to repaint the uh, trimming because that You'd want it. All, I would assume you'd want it all in the same color. Yeah. Well, I could make a recommendation. He could take a color swatch of the canopy material 
we'll mm -hmm. just bring it to the paint store and have them, um, you know, match it with the computer yeah. systems yeah. they have, mm -hmm. which may work mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. Sure. Great. And Lindsay? I was going to make a similar comment about matching. I don't I don't feel too concerned about the exact shade of red that is the awning, but I do have some concerns about the potential um, for the two reds to clash. So, mm -hmm. and I don't think they necessarily need to be exactly the same, but I do think having a an awareness of whether or not they're compatible is important. So I do like how in the red in the photo um there's a, a slightly lighter red tone I'm sure that's just the way the photo is or the the color that's there um, is working with the shadows and it's all looking okay but I might suggest yeah either matching or going a couple shades lighter with the same color so I like how it looks like it's in the same color family as the burgundy but it's just a, a couple shades lighter so I think that makes it pop, um, but we just don't want the two reds to clash. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend something along those lines um, where the, the color of the red on the on the wall or the storefront and the door is painted to be consistent with the awning. Yeah, that's what we would do. We would make it all burgundy. Yeah. Um, and then my other question is regarding the scalloping. Um, I think that the signage looks really nice. I like the stepping of the frame such that the portion of the awning over the door pops up higher. I see that that's how the lone wolf was, and I think that's a nice thing to retain. Um, the scalloping, though, I, I question because um, I think the way that that valence uh, wears over time can be problematic, especially with the lettering of the signage being located along that valence. And so I wonder if there's um, if there's an option to provide an additional kind of band of frame that that, that valence attaches to. Um, I think to my eye, if I were designing this, I would just say like, let that valence be a straight across line that's secured to another bar of structure that's part of the awning just so that that valence doesn't become loose and kind of wavy the way that it, it appears in the lone wolf especially given that the lettering um will be harder to read if that mm. if that happens over time um so you know obviously that involves a bit of structural not structural but um you know an additional bit of framing and that may or may not be available right now, but I just, I would, I would question whether or not there's a benefit to having that kind of valence uh, feature, or if there's a way to, to even lose that valence or just make it, make the lettering sit above it. Um, I just, I get concerned about that kind of wearing over time. Can I answer that real quick? Sure. So the material that I'm using is a little more rigid than the one that you see in the original picture. Um, and that balance, the shape that you see there is actually just a mock-up. It was just us trying to follow the old balance. So that's not really the exact shape of it. And if you prefer, we could actually keep the bottom straight as well. But to add more framework to that structure is going to become like a really big project, uh, which I don't think Sam is accounting for as far as financial uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. procurement uh, from the initial contract. So if he's willing to to, to visit that, I think we're capable of fabricating and, you know, I, I could look at it with him, but again, that would be up to Sam. It's financially as far as that goes, but anything I can do to, you know, keep the, the board happy and, and work with you on, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to visit any mm -hmm. ideas and thoughts. Okay, so Lindsay, how do you feel about if the if the if the valence wasn't um, more strongly structured to remain rigid, a straight edge would that assuage your worry about the the wear over time? Um, I think that it might just look cleaner overall. 
um, that's my my preference from a design standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that it will necessarily change whether or not there's that kind of um, wrinkling or waving that will happen, but it sounds like the fabric that you're using is is engineered to try to resist that as, as much as possible. So I don't know, what do other people think about the scalloping versus a straight edge? I definitely would like straight edge. I, I think it would look a little better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that if I was, my vote would be uh, straight edge if it's possible without doing any elaborate. You know, no, that wouldn't affect him at all. As, okay. as far as, you know, anything to do with the finances. You know, yeah, it would just I, be us doing a different. Uh, sorry, I apologize. No, sorry, it's, it's a Zoom thing. Um, I agree. I think a, a straight edge would be a nice complement to the the circle logo, um, and I also think that it would because they're you know the the lettering um, is serif font. I think it'll make it easier to read. So I would also vote for a straight edge on that balance. Um. Could I take a pass at summarizing our, our? I, yeah, please. How about lettering on the door? Or, right. Are we going to have any more or dumping on the windows or something on the door? We would have to see that, I think. Sam, do you have a response? Oh um, yes, just kind of we. You guys just talked about kind of how that. Kind of make people easy to see the the, the name because you know if we still work on it. Probably we have to put a kind of like some something special on the windows. Kind of like it will be make people easy to see kind of like our logo and the name for our earning. Do you guys know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you you would um. Since you're not presenting it tonight, if you want to have yes. additional signage on the door or windows, you can come back to the design review board. Yes, yes. I, think that, I already asked the Jennifer about that issues, and the Jennifer just let me make a lot of designing for the windows. So I still work on that, and okay. I'll be asking the Jennifer more detail about the window design application. But the only just kind of we all good, just keep the same size and then the same shape and the same color with this design. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So tonight we will approve the awning with recommendations, and you can we can do the doors and windows. It, it'll be the same logo and things, but you still should come back to the design review board one more time. And so. Sam, if you need, sorry, if you need help with the design, let me know for the windows and the glass. Oh, okay, sure, sure. Thank you, Todd. Right. Yep, no problem. All right. So Lindsay or Catherine, any other things to add before we summarize and? No. Yes. Okay. I would just say that similar to the last one, I think it looks really nice and um, I'm excited to see the restaurant coming to town. Um, and these um, recommendations, in my mind at least, are very minor and nothing that would be a deal breaker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So the recommend, if I could summarize, the recommendations are that we would like to see that awning have the, the front edge, the valence of the awning have a straight edge. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the second recommendation is to ensure color compatibility between the awning and the red pink on the facade. Yes. And the suggestion mm -hmm. is, is to stay in the burgundy family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, either the same color or one or two shades lighter. Did I capture that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm really excited to see something coming into the Lone Wolf location, by the way, this is very great. Um, okay, so is there a motion to approve this uh, proposal with the recommendations? I so move. And a second? Second. Great. Can we vote? All in favor, say aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> And Chuck's joining the board. Thank you very much. Thanks for thank your presentation you. tonight. Thank you. Can guys. I say something to, to yeah. everybody? I want to thank yeah. all you ladies for your time and thanks for 
you know, working with us. And we hope to, you know, work well with you in the future on any other first, you know, future projects. Yes. And if you ever have any questions, I did have one other question. Do you need to see the mock-up with the straight balance still? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just, just want to make sure. Yes. Yep, we're all set. Okay. okay. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Hope you'll Sam will be in touch soon, okay? <laughs> yes, I'll be in touch. Right. Maybe, maybe, maybe see you tomorrow. Okay. Yep. Bye. Oh wait, you Bye. can't see me tomorrow. I have our shop is shut down due to COVID, so you can't come to my shop tomorrow. Oh, let's find make another schedule. So maybe you. next week, next week, but we can still finalize stuff via Zoom and email. Sorry, yeah, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> no, we'll thank talk you. on our own after. But thank you all. I appreciate. All right, thank you so much. Have a okay, nice evening. Bye. Mm -hmm. All right. The next item on the agenda tonight is DRB FY 2023-08 protocol, Amherst LLC at 1 East Pleasant Street. Hi there. Hey, uh, how are you doing this evening? All right, thanks. Okay. We hope that you can um, screen share and share your proposal with us. And if you can't, then I think Maureen could queue it up. I'll be able to do it. Thank you. All right. Thanks. All right, are you able to see that? Uh -huh. All right, so um, protocol is going to go into uh, 1 East Pleasant uh, Street. And right down, it's the building that also has Aya in it. Um, it is going to be a, a cocktail bar. Um, we're excited about the space. It has really tall ceilings inside, about 14 foot tall ceilings uh, with a lot of glass. There's going to be we have over 400 plants in the space. Um, it's gonna use some oak wood in the space as well, as well as uh, copper. Uh, and so it's gonna be this kind of natural um, feel with the, the plants and the copper. Um, and then today we're presenting some outdoor material to you all um, to get approval. Um, so this is the location at 1 East Pleasant Street. Um, in the red box, I've highlighted the kind of the window bays. Um, you'll see there's three on the north side of the building. Uh, and there's five that run down the west side of the building. Here's a, a view I just took from um, Google Street View. I get a little close-up uh, vision of it. Uh, and then one looking just on the west side, you can see those five bays that I'd mentioned. Um, the primary entrance is, is right here uh, on the west side. Uh, and then the north side has a uh, emergency exit, um, exit only door. And so we're presenting to you today is um, each one of these window bays, uh, we want to put in a planter. Um, the bays are about 10 feet um, wide. And so the planters, we look to occupy that full space. Uh, and you'll see a little bit indented uh, from, the, from the sidewalk. So there'll still be that um, visual um, pullback as you're walking down the street. Um, the other thing that we wanted to include was a blade sign uh, locating and kind of indicating our front door entrance over here. Um, the outdoor planters are all insulated. Um, they're made of uh, polystyrene and then have a polyurea uh, coating on it. It's similar to like the truck beds. Um, so it's a robust material that's used to being outdoors, does not crack, does not um, get graffitied easily. Um, and then also can kind of insulate the plants that are going to be planted inside. The blade sign, what we're going to do is use uh, some of the materials from the inside, the natural copper, um, to kind of create a 30 inch by 30 inch um, square uh, and cut out our logo um, that kind of wraps, which you'll see in a second. So this was a early on uh, going through the branding package, what we were looking at. Um, for our blade sign, something that was a square um, that would kind of match the similar aesthetic to Aya, just the square blade coming off in front of their door. Um, and so we have the protocol wrapping around with kind of the negative space in the lower left corner. Um, what we're trying to do is, is instead of this black material, we want to do copper there and then the font being a punched out um, logo um, with an interior light to come through. So these are the planters that we have picked out. Um, once again, they're insulated um, and pretty robust uh, material. And these are the plants that we've picked out. So it's just this native grass to the area. Um, they grow nice and tall during the summer, 
Uh, and then for the winter time, we'd be looking, we'd trim it back. It still looks really nice once it gets trimmed back, but we'll provide um, something that can handle the New England winter still. It works really well in our, our climate zone 5B. Uh, and we do like that it's locally uh, sourced and native. And then this is the final uh, the cutout uh, logo that we're going to use, that 90 degree turn version of our logo. So I'll open it up to you, uh, any questions and look forward to hearing them. Thank you. Great. Um, just a question to clarify, if you could go back to the facade image, um, the dimensions of the planter, 10 feet wide to fill the bay. Mm -hmm. And 30, 30, inch it, depth 30 and inches, height. 42 inches high. Okay. Are there any other clarifying questions before we jump into discussion? All right. Oh, okay. go ahead, Catherine. Well, I, uh, the height of the sign, is there a standard, I forget, is there a standard height? Um, right now, the sign looked like somebody walked by that could clunk themselves. So uh, <laughs> I'm assuming that it's going to be, I don't know how, how high, how, how high off the ground. Um, we don't have a, a designated height as of right now, um, yeah. but we would definitely want it. We'll have it up high enough. Um, yeah. We did talk about um, trying to match Aya, but if you've been to this um, past this building, you'll notice the grade kind of um, dips. So we were trying to figure out exactly what height, and it might be we wanted to get it high enough so people couldn't touch the sign. Um, okay. Well, okay, that that's good. Though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely a a minimum, right? You yeah, can't bump your head on it. That's designed by code, but I appreciate the kind of locating it carefully. Um, all right, so conversation or discussion, um, Lindsay or Catherine, do you want to jump in? Well, I will say I was a little skeptical when when the proposal came through about planters because I've seen so many uh, proposals people make about having plants and gardens and every hanging and whatever and they don't carry through so i was a little worried but now that you you identify grasses that uh should be almost year round uh probably if you're going to cut them back they'll look a little chopped off for a while but uh i think better than flowers something of that sort so if you're going to go go with it um a grass seems uh, reasonable and uh, it'd be up to you to keep your word that you'll keep the planters looking good because if they don't look good, they become ashtrays and garbage pits and everything else. And you got a, quite a few of them there. So hopefully it'll look good. Absolutely. Yeah. We definitely wanted to try to take something that would um, look good, but minimize maintenance because we understand the, right. the bring effort that would take uh, our staff to maintain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the actual material of the panel on the planter face? It's a, um, so they use a um, polystrene, which is like a, a foam that insulates, and then they cover the polystrene with polyurea. Um, it's the, um, I forgot what the brand name is, but it, they use it for truck bed liners. Um, so if you if you get a new truck and you wanted to protect your um, the material, you can spray it on. It's like um, it has a, a little bit of an abrasion to it, and it's it's really rough and kind of protects your truck bed. So they've just applied it here to the the planters. Is that existing or is that proposed? Uh, that is so. These are the the planters, the planter view. Um, that's what the the website we're using. These um, it's called Polystone Planters. Okay. Uh, I, I did see that in the presentation. I just wasn't sure if you were adding a panel to the face of that or if that's the finish that's shown is what. Yes, that, this is the finish. And okay. we're going to go with a gray granite. So this is the actual um, coloring. Got it. Thank you for clarifying. I think that will look really nice. And I like the grasses um, and the rhythm of it throughout the, the front of the, of the space. And then the sign, when you say it's going to be um, backlit, but also cut out, I'm a little confused about that. So 
where the letters are shown in that image, it will be basically there will be no material there. No material. True negative space. And mm -hmm. then the rest of the sign is lit. Is that so we were um so this uh the cutout, yes, that'll be a negative space for the protocol. Um, and then the material that you'll see is copper with a seal on it, so it doesn't um, uh, weather over time. And then the light will be from within and kind of illuminate the, the lettering. Got it. And then that'll be two-sided. We've had a hard time trying to find a sign manufacturer to do this, but we do have a local uh, metal smith that we've been working with. Um, mm -hmm. And neither him nor, nor I are good at um, uh, kind of doing design on, on the on the computer. So this is the best. We got this from our um, brand creator. Mm. Uh, done. It's very helpful. It um, I think it looks really nice. Um, and I, I, I can envision what you're describing pretty clearly. Um, I'm curious about the copper. So that's the, that's the finish on the Aya sign as well. Uh, Aya has um, a, a different different material. Um, what we were trying to mimic for the Aya sign is is the blade concept in about the the same size as their sign. The mounting is is similar as well. Aya sign is I think it's a I don't know what the materiality is, but it's gray and it has their letters. I'm not sure that it's interior lit. I can't remember actually, but. It it is it is lit. Um, it's lit. Okay. I, I work with them to get wiring. Uh, I also do work with the buildings there, so I, I help them get the wiring and electrical. Done. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the the mounting is similar. The the two arms and then the face plate. Um, Correct. That, yeah. That is a consistent, which I appreciate. Um, so, so just coming back to the copper, is it yeah. um, is it like a Will it be like a shiny copper? Is it a? I mean, yeah, we're gonna use like a um, a sheet copper that um, sometimes gets used for uh, roofing. Uh, so it's gonna be uh, like a shiny copper that has uh, a sealant on it that keeps it from from weathering over time. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I generally like copper. I think that's a cool design. You know for a sign in terms of just an isolation. I guess I'm, my only question is how that relates to the rest of the building. I think that most of the finishes on that building, if I remember correctly, maybe go to photo, are the black, powder coated black. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some of the, the down lighting um, cans are black. I'm trying to find a good picture. Here's a couple of them. Yeah, I think it could be a nice compliment. So I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. We were we were talking about um, to cap because uh, obviously we'll use the, the two different sides and we'll have to do something internally to keep because um, the ninety degree turn will yeah. will be in so the ninety degree turn looking to the north will be like this and then the ninety degree turn looking to the south will obviously be on the other side so we'll have to have some divider in the middle um, and then we were thinking about capping both the top and the sides with some sort of like a, a raw steel which would be a little bit more closer to that. Um, black can material. But this was a little bit of a problem we were trying to, we were hitting with uh, local sign. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little yeah. bit more detailed, but we really, really, really like the copper material. And uh, the interior of the bar has a 50 foot long copper bar top. So it's a kind of a prominent part of the space that we wanted to echo outside. Right. I think that's great. I, I guess I would say, yeah, I think having the, uh, the, the anchors, you know, the bars that attach back to the building. So that would be like a black powder coated black just like that yeah I like that I think that would work well with the with the rest of the design mm -hmm. and then I'd suggest that the frame also be the powder coated black and then you have your copper face plates Great. Um, like it, it kind of uh, makes the rest of the copper pop to kind oh. of get the highlight and then if you could um, flip back to the building elevation one more time. The IS sign is um, oh. aligned with, we can't see it here, the bus is right in front of it, but um, yeah, oh yeah. It's yeah. on it's on the oh yeah, we can see it on the post in yes. in alignment with that uh, the panel just below the windows. And I would suggest to match that. Yeah. I think it would be consistent for the building. Yeah. We, we were looking at doing that and then the the gray drop um 
from mm -hmm. that that south end of the building to the north end of the building mm -hmm. off the top of my head i would say is probably 18 inches and, and it, it is dramatic um because we i tried to do that originally uh, and we went there to look at it and it um it looks it is really high up and it just it kind of looks off if you're on the sidewalk we were we were looking at it as almost where this the can light is is a good height because you'll see the door right here uh is uh, about yeah, uh, and a half feet. feet tall so seven feet tall uh i think, I think it's more like about eight, eight foot or so but um we just didn't want to put it up too too high um because it looked different oh. it looked weird for the sidewalk um, and since we are backlighting it, we did wanted to keep it away from the, the residences above. So where are you proposing it? Uh, right at the height of that, that uh, can light. So I'll switch. And that light would go away. Yes. So they would use the uh, power source for that uh, to light the side. Okay. So I have an issue with that because the can light lights the sidewalk, right? It serves, I think they're down lights. They are down. And so if you remove that, then you have a, a dark spot right at your entryway. And I, I don't think that, I think we'd have to either go above the can light um, or your sign would have to incorporate some down lighting because I'm, I'm not convinced. It's an unfortunate that design thing to contend with. Um, yeah. That's it because that does make sense in terms of where you'd want signage, but yes. I agree with Erica, you don't want to lose that light. We looked at it below and it was too low, you would hit it. And then yeah, but below is not okay. So it's either above or your sign would have to incorporate some kind of downlight feature, I would think. You mean on the underside of the sign? Yeah. We do have, uh, just to note, we do have downlights. You can see the cans in between the window bays. Um, I don't know if that helps at all. But. Well, could you, uh, are those lights on now? I mean, you know, um, even though the restaurant, even though the bar is not there, are those lights typically on anyway, lighting the uh, sidewalk? Yes. Could you, could you uh, play around with removing, you know, turning that one off and just get a sense of where light might be needed? Because I think we've got a little issue here. Uh, yes, I would just as a second point, if if we are able to reconcile the light issue, what are your thoughts on aligning the top edge, at least with that panel datum that Erica's comments uh, um, referenced? So sliding it all the way up so to that the red the line edge is aligned with that red. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. That gets it at least to be related to that, at least at some, you know, at some in some way. Um, and then I wonder if, what's the height of it? Uh, 30, 30 inches. Okay. So, so I would say at least that, I think that it just, it, if we were to take the, the light, the loss of that light fixture out of the equation, I do think that sliding it up, um, would be, would be good. Um, I don't think it necessarily needs to be aligned exactly with the eye, but I think having it um, aligned with that bottom edge would be good. Um, yeah, what we had tried to do um, here, the most nat natural spot for the height was where mm -hmm. I placed it, and I tried to align it with the, the mm -hmm. top of the, yeah. the downlit mm -hmm. cans. Yeah, uh, I think that's another, that's another you know, it's, I think, you know, to Lindsay's point, like trying to align it with something on the building. And so in this case, if you're aligning it with the top of the can lights, I think that that's one, that's a, a doable feature. But if you thought, oh, it should be higher then the next step up would be to align it with um, the soffit, basically. Because you will get, you know, people trying to hit it. Um, if it's low enough and it, it's looking like it's, if it's eight feet, I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think I agree with Erica. I think, you know, obviously aligning it with something is great. Um, but what is the question? Yeah. And, um, personally, I think 
pulling it up just above those lights gives it a little bit more of a presence, especially given that the storefront head is kind of at that yeah. at that line. It feels like it wants to be there just visually. Um, Would it be helpful to see a street view from the entrance of one um, end of the building or both ends of the building to see the I assign from that perspective? I think the, the point here is that the I assign that that location is the one that I suggested, but Dylan's response was that because the grade drops so much, that's yep. too high. It's just, yeah. so we could rule well, that yeah, out. So to see that with that, with, I, I don't know if, if that would be helpful to see that in a street view. I don't know if that would help this discussion. Uh, my sense is that, um, Dylan, you may have to come back anyways, because you're also not proposing, like the, our previous presenter tonight, you're not proposing any door or window signage, and I suspect that you're going to have some. So We don't want to do any door or window signage. Nothing? Um, we wanted flexibility. We don't want to post hours. We'll keep it online. We just okay. want right. to keep flexibility. All right. In that case, in that case, then Maureen, yes, because we could keep this to one, <laughs> one meeting. That you would like to see the street? Yeah. View? Okay, yeah. yeah, sure. Give me uh, one second. I mean, and the then, other thing I'm going to check out is that, remember the elevations I gave you of the building? Um, I'm trying to find that because that'll give us a reference of how those windows are measured in height. So I think that'll give us an idea of how tall the sign would be if it was up in that soffit band. Oh, good. So I'll, I'll see if I can't dig that up while we're talking to him. Yeah. <clears throat> so are you working with Camille Peters uh, for the uh, your metal work, the signage? Uh, no, we're working with Blue Collar Artisans um, and Mike Poole. He's done a great job. He did our, um, if anyone's been in the lobby of One East Pleasant, we have like this glass um, leasing office and he did all the steel work for that internally and made planter. Yeah, He's mm -hmm. a phenomenal local um, uh, metalsmith. That's great. Um, uh, oh, so I'm going to stop your share and share my yeah. screen. Um, Oops, sorry. Um, so this is the door between these within this bay right here, and then the Aya sign. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, I don't think my I don't think my opinion changes at all. I'd say still aligning with some feature of the building, either the location of the, the, the elevation of the IS sign, the underside of the that band below the windows or the top of the lights would be, right? You wanna kind of set it in alignment with something on the building. It's a kind of a, a, a move that's less about the is, sign than the building. It's more about the aligning with the building. Is the location the um, where that red dot is? The red light. Um, OK. Yeah, so the sign would be where that, is that a, like a little red? What is that little red light to the left of the entrance? Yeah. It's like some sort of I think actually, where uh, you keep moving down the Oh, block. you know what? Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's the Rufus King. Oh, and that was for, I guess that's a uh, second door means of egress for IR, or maybe that's to get to the apartments. That's the apartments. Yeah. Sorry. The thank one. you. All right. Yeah. So, so is that <clears throat> just for my own clarity, we're strongly recommending that that light remain. Is that right? And that's what we're suggesting is working around the fact the light remains. Is that, am I correct on that? Is, is there a creative way of uh, making a down light interior you know, of this, okay. uh, um, putting a light in inside the sign that? I have an idea. Yeah. Is down light. What if, um, can I draw on this? Yeah. yeah. What if, um, let's see if I can do this. What if the blade came out um was was basically mounted at the edge and came out you know this way is that is that something that you could consider so it's not centered here but rather it's shifted to be like you could even do like a corner mount 
Interesting. I think that's a nice compromise, Lindsay, because the, the the column is so wide. It certainly, I don't I don't know because I'm thinking about the wiring. Um, we we would pull from the the can lights. That's that area. So we would have yeah. a we'd have an ability to we might be able to drill, but in those columns, that's all the um, right the top down drainage. You can see one of the cow tongues to the right of the entrance. That's uh, some drainage coming out, and then you'll see there's kind of some some of these have plumbing in it as well because I know mm -hmm. the sewer line runs right through the bottom of uh, the section of the building. I like that it gets it away from the light and the light can still be part of the kind of rhythm of the building, which feels so strong and kind of important to maintain. And it pulls it in toward the storefront. It, he'll, it still holds kind of a, an important place on the pier. Um, I don't know. Okay. It's something that I could, I could propose to the team. Um, I think that they would probably prefer figuring out a solution for downlighting within the sign since we're custom making the sign. It might be not too much additional to um, incorporate it in in some way. And then we would match we would match the same uh, uh, whatever the metric for the lighting, the lumens or the the wattage. So it has a similar lighting effect. I wonder too if um... And then here, actually, see what they do. Um, I just, I was kind of curious to see where the I assign was, was it centered? And um, it looks like they have a light un underneath. Yeah. And if, and if you walk by the building, that can light is maybe at six foot there. And then the other side, it's at whatever it might be. I'm trying to find those elevations still. Though I said I gave you, I kind of excluded I as, but I'm trying to figure out, find the one. That yeah, I, but you, to your point, it is well above the height of the door here. So the slope down is significant. Yeah. I so might be able to find it as well, Dylan. Okay. Um, uh, to keep us moving along, can I put this on this part of the conversation on hold and move this forward to the to the planters while we're looking for that additional information? Um, I have a concern with the planters Dylan, that it, they're quite high um, when we, if you think 42 inches plus the, the bulb of the grasses, which is likely to be, I, I looked it up, um, at least a foot, if not 18 inches, that means that the top of the grass is going to be at or above eye level of the average Amherst resident. And my concern here is that a lot of that facade is now becoming blocked off, right? So that not only are we removing this kind of space of refuge, it's a narrow sidewalk there and we're removing the kind of space for people to duck out of the rain. Um, we're also removing the connection, the visual connection to the interior of um, your establishment when you know we're in summer grass season. Um, and so I'm, my, I have two concerns here and they, one is the, the the depth of the planter really filling up the bay as much as it does. And the second one is the height of the planter. I think that they're, they are well designed and they're um, sophisticated and I love the idea of using grasses. I'm just concerned with the, the volume of the thing and the gray, I think also is, um, you know, a 42 inch high, right? That's higher than a countertop. It's higher than a desk. It's it's a lot. Um, and I, I think that it, it doesn't have a, I want it to be friendlier in a way. So that could come from lowering it, removing one or two. Um, and I'm I'm love to hear the, the board members thoughts on this. Um, it's really the, you know, the narrowness of the sidewalk and then masking a lot of that glass. And the intent in the inside that we'll have seating that's right up against that glass. And so what we're trying to do is try to create a little bit of uh, breathing room space from the sidewalk and the people uh, right by the grass uh, was the design element and what we're trying to give to the inside some privacy with the grass. Um, 
and then the other thing was to fill that void specifically because of um we've had we've had people sleeping there and in trash accumulating there and so trying to kind of uh take that space and and, and fill it up uh with something could could they stop to erica's point like could they still fill i think the way that you're proposing but just come down in height and some kind of consistent rhythmic way that makes sense with the grade change um so they maintain like a three foot height across the length of the building yeah, I see what you're saying. Most of the the grade gets made up um, right in right at the entrance. So if we're at the, um, let me see if I can share a street view. What's what's the interior floor level? Does it also step down um, across the length of that um, facade? Sorry, I, I missed the question. I was. Does the floor level change at all, or is it because uh, you were talking about having like floor level is all the same inside? You'll notice um, in these bays right here that um, the glass comes down almost to the ground. Over here, um, the floor is still the same inside, but there's a little bit extra mm -hmm. height at the end of the grade that we we kind of lose. You'll see that most of it is located right here at the lobby entrance up to Aya. You'll see as the kind of grade kind of continues the, most of it the is other, sorry, the other way to consider it is if you set the maximum height at three feet and you carried that line all the way across and just let it be a shell just a, a shorter planter at the higher elevation that's another approach mm -hmm. the um the we are buying those off off a shelf with the specified dimensions they won't they aren't we don't have the ability to to custom do they have different heights they have different styles, but not the the different heights. Yeah, I feel pretty strongly about this, and I I think that it's um, you know, this is already a you know, it's already a narrow sidewalk. It's a place where a lot of people, especially with the new building coming uh, just down the street, it's going to be a lot of people walking by. the The liveliness of what's happening on the interior. Um, I think could be a real asset to the street life of, of Amherst. And I, I'm, I'm reluctant to, to be excited about cutting that off. I think you'll still get the, the view into the space because the, the, the glass windows here are 11 foot three and three quarters of an inch. Sure, but they're gonna be 42 inches is gonna be masked by the planter. And then with the grasses growing, is there a, a three foot option? If there's a three foot option, I think that that would be, or 30 inches. We could we could see, but we could go back and, and, and see if they can do 36 instead of the, instead of the full height. Because mm -hmm. I think even, I mean, it feels like that might be a compromise because from the inside, if you're seated, right, you're at like, you know, 15, 18 inches most. And so your head is really gonna be below that three foot edge. So you're still being, you know, visually kind of like concealed at, at a seating level, a seated level. But Poor from the good. outside, you're able to see in at eye level without feeling kind of overwhelmed by that, mm -hmm. that yeah. mass. Yeah, and I, I also, I mean, I generally would love to see maybe the corner remain open. I understand, I totally get it. I understand what you're, what you're going for and that kind of sense of consistency and privacy, but I also think that like to provide a little bit of a relief, mm -hmm. um, a space where the, besides the door itself, where the sidewalk, we can feel that width, um, that that would be a, a civic gesture appreciated. Or perhaps it only goes the length of the storefront if it if it yeah. still wants to maintain the consistency of the storefront, but it just stops at the at the at the brick, you know, um, corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we would. This would be a ten foot. It would end right here, so there would be a little bit of space. So you would end it. Uh, the, the ten foot planner would be here, here, and they would kind of go across this um, lighter white material. So yeah, whoever just drew the yellow. Has it right? Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Well, I sort of disagree, but not strongly enough that I'd throw a wrench in this, but I think the planters are gonna soften that building, which is very harsh and very industrial and not my favorite look for, for Amherst. And I thought when those planters were proposed, uh, that that was a good idea to give it uh, a little softness. And uh, if you're sitting inside, maybe you don't want, maybe you do want to hide behind a bush uh, rather than have somebody look in and see you sitting at, sitting at a table having a martini. I, you know, I don't, um, I don't know that, that would bother me as a, per I don't know if that would bother customers if they sat down and they looked out and they saw a bush or grass. Uh, but uh, I don't know, we'll take a poll on that, but uh, I, I do vote for the planters. I understand the height issue may be a little touchy and if it could go down a little bit, then uh, fine. Um, there's pretty much dead space in there because I go by there and I went purposely by there today. Um, and, and it's like you say, the, the <clears throat> main reason why it might, uh, you may not want a planter is if you want to get out of the rain, you could duck into that, but that's the only purpose that little uh, uh, insert would ser serve. So um, uh, I'm definitely voting for the planters. Um, yeah, I agree. I like the, I like the yeah. idea of the planters. I just little, feel they're, they're a little high kind of overwhelmingly you. large, um, yeah. height wise. Not uh, yeah. not a, not in depth, and it's nothing. Um, yeah. I, 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 I don't have a problem with plant. the height, but I but if you but you know, but I'm willing to uh, go along with uh, any proposal that mm -hmm. uh, keeps the planters, and uh, so that's where I stand. So where. So yeah, I think that um, do we need to go back to the conversation now that we have uh, maybe somebody's found the elevation drawings? I don't know if anyone wanted to share them back to talk about the height of the sign mount. Unfortunately, I, I haven't been able to find them. I, I would have to dig a little deeper. Okay. I got a little distracted as well. Yeah. Um, but... uh, any chance, uh, Dylan, you know the file number through the planning board for? One EP. I, you know, I I was confused because I have handy on my computer for eleven. It was in an email today, Maureen. I have it. Oh, was it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, what I excluded on that was there are elevations that would have helped with the IA, um, which I was trying to find. But at least that elevation that you have might it might be helpful if someone wants to share that. Uh, Maureen, it was in the email you sent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll pull that up. Um, Nine thirty this morning. Nine twenty-six. Yep. Um, I'm going to have to jump off here not too long from now, um, just as a heads up. Okay, thanks, Lindsay. Can you stay for five more minutes? Yes. So uh, the west elevation, what, what oh give me one second. Uh, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my computer's acting slow. So not to mention, but we have a floor elevation. Um, how about scrolling down a page and we can look at the height of CW2 door? Two pages, maybe? There was a, there's a window schedule, window door schedule. So one of these is labeled CW2 and we would... CW2 is 12 foot six and three eighths of an inch. Oh, down here, yeah. 12 and a half feet. There we go. That tells us. Yeah, and an eight foot door. It's awesome. Lindsay, does that give you any insight into? Oh, and it and that is uh, if you scroll to CW six, that's the door for Aya and Moserium. That's nine foot six. Mm -hmm. So the Aya's front door is three foot 
taller or higher in elevation. And so our sign, if we matched it, would be three foot higher. Mm -hmm. So um, just going back visually, the, the height of the light fixture that we're talking about, um, that up-down light is aligned, it looks like, with the door head. Is that thing correct? Uh, it looks like it's a little bit above. If you scroll back up to... Uh, uh, are you oh, talking yeah. about the Iowa one or the no just the yeah let's talk about protocol <laughs> uh uh dylan you'll have uh actually i can pull up protocol this one all right can you still can you see that i'm changing my screen? yes okay, yeah cool. yeah um it's like the last wait wait, wait ah sorry computer is acting weird um I think the elevation might give a better, a truer sense of that, as opposed to the Google shot. Uh, do you mind if I take the screen over? Oh, yeah, please do. Thank you. So, Lindsay, you were asking about the top of that down light. Uh, in mm -hmm. reference to this is the door for protocol and so mm -hmm. the door is at eight foot tall and that light would be up um, it doesn't have a measurement that would call it out but we know that the top of this is 12 foot six and this is eight foot and that's mm -hmm. 12 six. Mm -hmm. and you were proposing basically it would be aligned here and centered there correct yeah yeah i mean i guess coming back to the idea of like We've got a lot of space to work with in there. So, and it's a 30 inch sign, right? 30 inch, yep. If we zoom out a little bit, maybe we can get the height of, um, I'm not sure how you, how you drew that, but you can see um, where Aya had their sign, they have their sign just above that, that mm -hmm. hand line as we noticed. And if you kind of follow that line over, it would be roughly. Yeah, it'd be pretty high. It would, well, I think it was it was aligned with that panel, right? So it would be like here. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I guess as an easy way out, we could consider even if it wasn't a corner sign, like if it landed somewhere in between. I, I mean, the more the closer you get to that light, the more of a conflict it is, obviously. Um, you could. I think if it gets below it, it's going to be too low. So I think that's out. I feel like if you align the top of it, top edge of it with that panel, or even split the difference, I don't know. I mean, such that maybe the bottom is aligned with that light fixture so that it sits. And it sounds like, Dylan, you're open to, because you have to create a sign that's two sides lit with a divider down the middle that already has some width to it. So if you could incorporate a downlight there. I think that would be a good compromise. And then we can uh -huh. we can kind of keep that height matching similar to the tops of these things, which I think aesthetically would look really nice. Uh, and then we would match whatever downlighting, we'd match the same color wattage um, to make sure that the light is kind of consistent. We don't want to have any sort of too different of a white color. Yeah, out. I really appreciate your sensitivity to that. And I think that that would be, you know, we kind of hit all the marks, right? You're responding to the, the context of the building itself and all of the cues that it gives about where a location should be. You're giving your sign the kind of space and um, visibility that it needs and you're um, kind of keeping the rhythm of the light on the sidewalk. I like it, it kind of, it also brings it more uh, a dynamic piece of the sign. I think yeah. it might help uh, highlight it almost. Yeah, I think that'll be really nice. Yeah. Right. Um, and then with regards to the sign, we also um, had suggested, we like your mounting strategy, um, but suggested if you are building a frame around it that you match the black. Match it. I think that's, that's definitely doable. Um, we'd keep that consistent and mm. uh, yeah. Or wrap it in copper, because it's another strategy, but um, all right. And then with regards to the planters, um, I would like to recommend that they be lower, not to exceed um, 36 inches. 
tall um, so that we can retain some sense of visual connection from the sidewalk into the restaurant. Um, and also to not have these kind of walls of gray uh, on the sidewalk. Yeah, I think if the, sorry, just to jump in on that point as well. I think that if the plantings themselves were going to be shorter, I would feel less concern, but I think it's a pretty um, valid concern given that those plants are gonna be so tall on top of, it's just gonna really kind of block off that opening visually. So I do think that 36 feels like the right max and I would even consider lower. I would like it to process. be 30, yeah. That's okay, you can make that recommendation. Can we recommend 30? Yeah, so these 36? recommendations are for the building commissioner to consider. Yeah. Um, as as they seek their um, their particular permit, I'm not okay. sure if it's a building permit or an Article 14 permit, but all right. Yeah, well, and I understand that you know with the manufacturing limitations in mind, you may only be able to get to a certain height, but I think it's a it's a good recommendation. The 30. Yeah, I think we'd be willing to accept that. It's a re reasonable request, so I appreciate it. Okay, awesome. All right, then. <laughs> um, is there a, a, a move? Um, Erica, would you be able to just summarize really quickly the whole signage approach? Sure. Um, all right, see if I can do this justice. <laughs> Maureen, you've been taking notes, so correct me if you hear something different. Um, the recommendation for the blade sign is that, um, first of all, we love the design. We approve the, the overall design of the copper panel with the cutout letters are suggesting a, um, a black frame for that. And with regards to the height of the sign, we think that you should align it with some element of the building, uh, preferably the top of the existing down lights and that the sign itself should incorporate a downlight feature. How'd I do? Perfect, and then lower the planters. And then lower the planters, preferably to 30 inches, not to exceed 36. And then I'm noticing on that topic of where it ends, it looks like it almost could align with the pop out at the second floor level, um, not to get too mm -hmm. architect-y on this, but um, you know, does this point, oh, I can't draw a straight line, but like where this corner is here, like does that, is it possible to kind of like let it be the, sa the same? Because it seems like that, that steps back to just a hair, just like a brick over that opening. But I think maybe that's the suggestion was that the planter is only as wide as the windows. The column is kind of a re remains uh, uncovered by the planter. Got it. Correct. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> All right. Is there any further discussion, or should we make a? I move that move. we uh, approve the. Uh, proposal with the uh, suggestions uh, relating to the signage, the lighting, and the height of the planters. Does that Second. make sense? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, thank you all. I'm very excited to come check it out. We're it excited to open. <laughs> when is the opening? Uh, Mid-November. Oh wow, that's all right. So soon. It's coming. It's been nice having just the banner out because you know it feels like something's happening, even though There's we have a lot of buzz. Out. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> is well, it a, is it drinks only or is there food too? Um, food too. Um, yep. And we've got um, two really great operators um, that worked on you know on Bullwood. Um, and so we've they figured out how to make uh, cocktails keggable. So there's some keg cocktails. They'll be make your own cocktails. There's going to be some beer on tap too, wine coolers. Um, 
But yeah, our the biggest thing is gonna be the plants. It's it's like 400 something plants in there. And then we have like rebar structure that goes up 15 feet. And so there's all these uh, different types of plants kind of coming off and try to, uh, with COVID, make it uh, green, nice space, put a lot of money into HEPA filters and the HVAC system. And um, we're really excited for it. We think cool. it's gonna be uh, something that Amherst is gonna love. That's great. What a great location too. So Lindsay, are, do you need to leave or can you stick around for the next application? Um, what's, what's the last one? Uh, Dagmar, with another restaurant, similar, um, it's simpler because I think it's just a, a window decals um, and some outdoor furnishings. Okay, give me just one minute. Okay, right, because we lose our quorum if Lindsay leaves, so. Oh, gotcha, yeah. Um, but well, uh, well, I guess we'll we'll see if she can come back before I introduce it. So is, will Vicki be in charge of the bar? Yes, yes. Victoria will be in charge of the bar. We have Daniela as well. Um, oh, good. And good. she she's phenomenal too. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they're 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 kind of they're our operating partners for Amherst Oyster Bar, which you've heard already from us, and then Dagmar, which I'll sure. present here in a moment. Yes. So, right. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, they're phenomenal. That's great. When's the oyster bar expected to? Oh yeah, you, yeah, you guys need to do January. some work. Yeah, we came back and got a little that. delay on that one. Yeah, yeah I forgot. Yep. Um, but hopefully, uh, it was originally planned for October third. I think it's going to get punted a week, but uh, we'll be taking off the front of uh, Judy's, and it'll it'll start moving on the exterior at least. Exciting. Okay, she's back. Okay. Thank you for making the time. All right, we'll, we'll keep this nice and efficient. The next proposal is DRB FY 2023-09, Dagmar, Amherst LLC at 26 Main Street. Great. I'll share my screen here. Is it Main Street or Spring Street? Uh, uh, 26 uh, Spring Street. Spring. Mm -hmm. Oh, typo in the, in yeah. the agenda then. Oh, okay. sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Thank I'm you. sorry about you're that. Right, Catherine. Yeah, yeah good call. You. Whoops. Um, so we went with a, a simpler font here. Um, and we've since dropped the apostrophe S, so it'll just be Dagmar. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll get to that in a, a second. Um, I know Maureen asked about, actually, I'll do it right now. Maureen asked me about the um, how we came to the name um, Dagmar. Um, and we were the building that's going up right now at 26 Spring is about to start receiving some Danish brick on it. And so um, we were looking for motifs of the building and how to incorporate that into the bar space. And there's gonna be this gray uh, Danish brick, um, which we can see here, uh, and some granite features as well up front and a rock wall. So it's there's a lot of stone. And so we were kind of searching for, um, we were thinking about Arctic or ocean or cooler temperatures. Um, and we came across uh, this explorer uh, named Peter Funchen, and there's a really uh, dynamic picture of him. I don't know if you saw that in the email that got sent through, um, but next to him is uh, Dagmar. And um, so you kind of get pulled into that image and this six foot seven person guy with a giant coat on. Um, and so we had that on our mood board as we were thinking about, uh, we were kind of going down an ice, tundra arctic like exploration idea um and we kind of kept coming back to that image and it was really dagmar that was standing out just the 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 difference um the elegance the small frame but it's kind of what gave that photo depth mm -hmm. um, and so we we liked the name dagmar because it was it's uh, it has some ambiguity to it we didn't uh, we like the idea of this bar being less like the oyster bar which tells you what it is it's seafood or a protocol which Kind of came out of we were designing during the time with COVID protocols, um, and so we like that. And then also the tie into the Danish brick just felt natural. So that's uh, that's kind of how we came to the name. Um, but this is the uh, rendering of Twenty Six Spring. This is right behind uh, Grace Church next to the Inn on Boltwood. Um, right behind this is the police station, the town hall. We wanted to go with that brick material there um, to kind of match uh, both the gray and white coloring on you know, Boltwood and the Grace Church. Um, so that's why there's a lot of stones here. Uh, go to the next slide. This is kind of a um, looking straight down uh, Spring Street. This is uh, the entire storefront area. 
And this is uh, the view from in on Boltwood looking right across. Um, so the right side is going to be the lobby entrance. This left side is going to be this exterior. Um, you'll see one door there with the lady in the pink bag. There's seating that kind of wraps around here, which we'll talk about, and then wraps down the side. And if we go back to this image, you can see that there's a handicap accessible ramp that comes up to um, one of the two doors. So uh, this is the floor plan of the space. It's um, the exterior section right here is what we'll be talking about today. Um, with the 26 spring plan approval, there was the stone bench that had been incorporated in um, mm -hmm. approved. And what we're going to talk about is the, the chairs here and the tables. We finally picked out something uh, that we think will work well for the outdoor area. Um, so these are the chairs that we found. Um, they're from uh, room and board. They're called the Maya Chase. Um, it has a marine grade uh, framing, wood framing in the interior. And then it has a water resistant foam uh, and an exterior coat. Uh, this fabric is sun resistant um, and water resistant. It also comes with covers that we can cover in the same material that kind of protects it a little bit further. Um, the table we found from Blue Dot, the dimensions on this is uh, 24 inches across uh, by 16 inches tall. So it's a, a lower coffee table type thing. Um, and that kind of gives us the seating here. So the idea um, is to just have this outdoor seating that's a little bit movable if we need to start um, kind of tucking them away. After hours, we can. They're not too heavy for uh, both to handle. Um, and we just pull them inside the space. So that's the furniture component. Uh, and then the uh, the signage, the logos, uh, you'll see that, that font that I had on the first screen. And we'll come back to it. But you'll see it right here on the uh, door A and door B. Um, the uh, width of it is 24 inches by 6 inches tall. Um, and we just kind of kept it quiet with all of the glass front we figured the inside will kind of do more of the speaking of the <laughs> space so and then that's the uh the logo again so i'll open up questions oh. yeah are there any questions from our comments from lindsay or Catherine? so oh. exciting it is so, um very nice so this would not be designed for serving dinner with more for people to have a cocktail, right? Because those yes. tables, yeah, okay. So protocol has a has a kitchen. AOB will have a kitchen. This is just going to be cocktails. It's a, a smaller smaller joint. Oh, so this is, oh, okay. So this is a cocktail lamp. Uh, this is not a dining. A dining. dining. Whiskey lounge, yeah. It, yeah. Okay. No provided, uh, no food provided inside either. Uh, there, there will be uh, food, but it's going to be without a kitchen. So um, we have a, they updated the menu today, but I haven't looked at it, but there's some, they have some canned fish, olives, charcuterie board type things, uh, things that we can do with refrigeration um, and nothing that requires cooking. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I think the signage proposed for the door is uh, elegant and appropriate. Um, I don't have any comments about that and I, I think that the form of the chairs is fantastic I would just caution you to choose something that's um not going to stay wet if you mm -hmm. miss there's no because you're not undercover there and so if it's a quick dry material I think you'll be fine but you might regret it if it's I think you mentioned foam I mean, yeah. I think the form of them is lovely. The color is great. I just don't want you to lose the opportunity to have people sitting outside if it rains in the morning and you don't get the chairs in on time. Absolutely. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely a tricky thing once you get into outdoor dining. We've yeah, figured, <laughs> we found out. Uh, we did want something a little soft, but something that still fit in with the stone. That's why we went with the gray. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely one of our concerns. We were we do have the cover with this, but it's New England. The weather can change in a in a heartbeat. So, um, it is it is good advice. We might come back to you down the road if we have to switch from this to like a, a bench. But we really didn't want to. We wanted something soft out yeah. there. Sure. Lindsay, any thoughts? I I would echo everything Erica said. Um, 
I think that the subtlety of the signage is consistent with the mood of the, the vibe that you're trying to create. So I, I am all for it. Um, I guess, you know, I don't know. There's like different schools of thought on like being able to read the sign before you approach the building. Um, if people are really looking for it, are they gonna be able to see it without walking to the front door? Um, I don't. I don't think that that necessarily means you shouldn't do what you're doing. I, I think it's, like I said, I think it's appropriate with what you're what you're trying to create. Um, but I I do wonder if perhaps there's an interest to do something that's equally subtle and elegant at more of the street front level. You have these like kind of planter walls. Um, I don't know if maybe something that happens. A reverse cutout sign that sits in the planter or something, something like that. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know where it wants to go, but, or if it even does, but it's just a question of like, is there something that steps forward to also indicate what's happening there um, so that you're not entirely reliant on people reading the front door or knowing where they are? Yeah, we never considered a, any sort of signage there, but it could be could be off of the stone or on the stone face, um, right? Kind of facing yeah. most traffic. We assume will come from um, come from the the west, kind of coming down past Grace, yeah. uh, and mm -hmm. so maybe that might be a good yeah. where that man is walking on. Maybe <laughs> a sign right there on the wall. Uh, yeah. So that people. Yeah, or where that person is sitting, like if there was something on one on the other side, I don't know. And I don't think it needs to be resolved in this meeting, but I do think it's worth um, considering for future, you know. Right, yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Great. I move that we accept the uh, proposed signage and uh, outdoor seating um, with the recommendation that they serious, seriously consider if the upholstery is going to be appropriate <laughs> for all weather. Right, so uh, approved, um, a proposal to approve, but if you if you change your mind, you may yeah. have to, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Second. One, three, two, second, great. Everyone in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Grant. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. And Dagmar will open. Dagmar, so 26 Spring is looking to deliver um, in, it, it's uh, next next spring. It, it's currently February 17th is the building itself, um, but we might, that might get pushed to March. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the restaurant will follow up shortly after, but um, we've, we've incorporated our same architect and our same um, construction team as the development projects for this one. So we're hoping that this goes a little bit quicker and smoother than um, protocol and AOB, which are kind of after the fact. Okay. Uh, but, so. Are you with Archipelago? Yes, yep. I don't agree with that. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you all. Have a good night. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know we have meeting minutes on the agenda. I know we also have public comment to address uh, before we Luckily, there's no one in attendance, okay. or not luckily, but uh, there's no one in attendance. Luckily for me, because I have to run. To yeah. Um, I did. Uh, I actually forgot to re email the July 7th. Okay. I was going to suggest for Lindsay's sake that we postpone them until the next meeting, anyways. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, it looks like we need more info from the fir uh, first applicant um, for the juice bar uh, about the lettering in the windows. Yep. Same thing with um, the second with La Hutong. Right. Yeah. So, I'll check in with them tomorrow just to remind them to send it. And then, so once I get that, then I will reach out to you all about scheduling another meeting. Okay. All right. Okay. I move that the meeting be adjourned. Second. Can I do that? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> okay. All in favor. Thank you all. Okay. Bye.
Thanks, Erica. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Okay.